Okay, hello once again to the Land Rover Toolbox videos and today we're going to talk about a basic charging system yeah because I'm sure you know and I don't need to tell you some people don't know so this is just general information what I have on the board here is a twin battery situation Start the motor and alternator and the fuse box. Okay, that will be the in engine fuse box. Now this is just basic, okay? The layout of some vehicles are different, but this is, I'll show you basically how this works. Now, so what we're gonna do first of all, we're gonna talk about the batteries, okay? Now, generally you have a vehicle with one battery and that's sufficient enough to, to start the vehicle supply power for the lights when the vehicle's stationary and the engine's not running, yeah? Um, we can put another battery in, in parallel, okay? Because parallel means it's positive to positive, negative to ground, yeah? Now generally what happens with our Land Rovers is that the ground is the chassis point and if you have the ground where the uh, alternator is uh, bolted to will be the engine which also has a ground to the chassis which goes back to the battery so it makes a complete circuit yeah on the negative side yeah now I'm not a, a, I'm not an electrician I'm not a, a university professor I just know the basics of this and this is what we need to know right so you have a battery let's say um, it's called 12 volt yeah but it's not really 12 volt at all. Yeah. Thing is, you might read your battery as 13.2 volts yeah, uh, when it's stationary once it's been charged, okay? The thing is that you'll have um, 1.2 volt of surface charge. To check your battery, first of all, is that you put your lights on for a couple of minutes to so take the surface charge off and then you check the voltage on your battery, okay? so. 12 volt is the, the nominal um, denomination of uh, voltage for this, right? But a fully charged battery is 12.7 volts, yeah? 12.7 volts. No higher, no lower, right? Half charged battery, yeah, if you go to your battery and it's 12 point something, it's, it's, it's under charge. 12.4 volts, yeah? And a battery that is flat is 12 volts, right? 12 volts. What will happen if you find a battery that um, is at like 11 volts, then it's been charged and tested and it's fucked, then it's because you, it's, it's dead, okay? But basically what happens, um, you, a lot of people don't really notice anything about the battery until they can't start, yeah? These starter modes these days, your 300 TDI, your TD5 or whatever, they'll start on 10 volts, yeah? You can, as long as it get the average through, that'll do 10 volts, and that will turn the engine over. It might be a bit sluggish, but it'll do it. Could be an earth fault, you have to check. I'm not going to tell you how to check these, we have to do that live, but... What happens is, is the battery here, if it's under power, the, the starter motor still might get you to start. However, you should check your voltage on your battery after you've taken the surface, surface charge off it, okay? Now, um, there are battery testers that will, will do a battery and it'll tell you straight away what the health is, what the charge rate is and whether you should replace it or not. And they're, they're reliable, so... And what we do at work is just quickly clip it on, check it, yeah, it says fail, that's it, new battery on. Don't think twice about it, because these things only have a certain amount of life, yeah? Um, if you've got a two-year battery, it might last you five years, okay? It might not. I always go by the guarantee date, the warranty on a battery. If it says two years, I'll change it after two years on my personal stuff, because it becomes unreliable after then, all right? So, um... What we'll see here is that with the vehicle not running, okay, so the alternator is not actually working. When you're running, when you when you um, in your vehicle, you turn your radio, when you turn your lights on, okay, the battery 
supplies power to the vehicle when it's not running and it supplies power to the starter motor to crank it over okay if for instance um, you want to, to know a rough figure of how much amperage a starter motor draws probably about 300 amps it could be less it could be more but right about there okay this battery should be able to supply that amperage for a certain amount of time uh, at a certain temperature to be able to turn that starter motor that's cold called cold cranking yeah the running on that now what you've got to be aware of okay is the battery is there only so to supply power to the vehicle when it's not running, when the alternator is not working. Yeah. So um, it's generally you have your battery lead connected to your starter motor. It's generally, and then it goes off to a fuse box, which then all, all the other stuff takes. Uh, this will be the engine fuse box, main big fuses. Yeah. Um, that will supply the whole vehicle. Okay, and, it, and it's. Uh, it used to be fused links, uh, now you've got fuses, okay, so all of this is, is a draw. Yeah. Um, you can obviously um, find vehicles that are taking other things off the battery, however, we just keep it simple, yeah. Alright, so the flow of uh, power will be going this way, yeah. That is a common terminal point, which is at the starter motor, it, that's all that is, it's a common terminal point helps to draw the current from the uh, um, battery uh, for the starter motor, yeah, but also it's a common terminal point for the alternator to put the charge back in the battery, right? You may find that some things will have this go to somewhere else, yeah, maybe to a fuse and then back down to a, a common terminal point, but <laughs> the old uh, 2.5 naturally aspirated diesels that have a uh, a loom will run, a brown one, run to here, okay, that would uh, get a bit warm and then start to break up, yeah. This cable should always be over the amperage rating of the output of this alternator, yeah, always going to here. Anyway, getting back to the plot, when the vehicle's not running, the current flows outwards from the battery, yeah, okay. You start the vehicle, and the alternator then starts putting current this way. It starts to change the flow, okay? So the battery then only becomes a link and a connection in the charging circuit, okay? The alternator will su should supply power to charge the battery and give enough for auxiliaries like, I don't know, far enough few injectors or something, I don't know, um, a TD5. Or um, your lights, your heater, and stuff like that. Okay. Now, this is where it becomes interesting because what you can do uh, to check if your alternator is working or not is put a uh, compass on this positive terminal, and you'll see when it's uh, you've got your lights on, the the flow will be one way. As soon as you start it and the the alternator starts working, it will change the flow so the magnetic current will go the other way so it'll move the needle on the on the compass it's a good one yeah very simple test do that in two seconds just lay on the cable yeah all right otherwise you can just check um with a load on what output this alternator is putting out yeah right so where are we <coughs> the alternator down here right, g for generator okay this is earth through the engine then back to the chassis and, and back to the, the battery it supplies power to the vehicle and will charge the battery or batteries yeah depending what you've got uh, some of you've got split relay charges or whatever yeah something in here stop the flow going back um what is in in the alternator which we're more concerned with um not for diagnostics purpose, but just for, for charging, is a voltage regulator. Yeah? So that's a regulator. What it does is understand what demands there are on the circuit and keep the supply constant. So what we're looking for, or what I like to what, what I like to look for is 14.4 volts. Yeah? 
with a charged battery because what you'll find is if the battery's gone down and it's a bit low on current it needs to fill that so the voltage will actually drop until that's full but if it's a charged battery um, and you have a load you put your lights on your headlights on and your heater for instance what will happen is you should still get uh, 2000 rpm is 14.4 volts or thereabouts this is 300 200 tdis um, should have about that. If it's starting to drop down as, as you put more load on and, and, you, and you're revving, then um, the brushes could be worn in this alternator and it's not being able to keep up with the charge. Alternatively, it could be bad earth. Yeah, this is quite common, bad earth. Now, one thing I'll say, I'm not gonna talk about the connections on the back here, except for, for this one, B+. All right, if this becomes loose and it jiggles about, okay, that, can short this alternator out and stop it working all right i'll tell you that for nothing i've seen it okay a loose battery terminal one yeah so basically what's happening here uh, engine's running is driving your your alternator it's putting current to your common terminal and off to your battery okay to charge your battery when the battery's charged doesn't do anything yeah and it's supplying uh power to the vehicle wherever it needs it that's the job of the alternator, not the battery. The battery is only there for starting and for supplying electric uh, or power when the vehicle hasn't got the engine running. Okay, you know, things like courtesy lights, stuff like that, radio for kids, when they're waiting for you in, uh, while you're uh, buying Land Rover bits, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so um, that is basically it in a nutshell. That's your charging system, yeah? What I will say, and you've got to be aware of this. Uh, you've got one battery, okay, yeah. You want to put another battery on for, for reliability and starting, or you might just put a bigger battery on than what uh, the vehicle manufacturer's specification is, okay? If you're having to put a bigger battery on, why? Why are you having to put a bigger battery on? Is it because you want to power lights? If so, um, you should really be thinking about an alternator um, whether that's up to par or not, whether it's putting out enough, yeah, um, or getting something bigger to, to be able to deal with the, the, the demand on it, okay. Now, with a bigger battery or two batteries, what happens is what you've done is you, it's like filling a tank up with diesel, okay. So you, you've got like 10 litres there and 10 litres there, okay. Fill up 10 litres, that's done. But then when you multiply it or, or enlarge it, 20 litres, it takes twice as long to fill up, for instance. Well, what happens is your alternator takes longer to charge both of these batteries up. And it won't prioritise these, it will just charge them. Yeah? If you've got one that's going down, not good. Yeah, because that will take the system down. That put too much demand on. Okay. Um, split relay charging is brilliant because it... Um, it will only do one until it's ready to do the next one and the demand is not on when it's not needed okay and that's really really good that's the best way to go twin batteries sometimes you may need for the output it depends what vehicle you got yeah? if you're having starting issues and you need more power it's not the battery in the connectors or the starter mode it can be about earth and i'll have to show you how to test for these it's really really important yeah as you probably know in the dark, you're trying to fit a battery, you can't see the plus or the minus. The minus terminal are always smaller, yeah? Right? It's always smaller because the demand is from the plus, yeah? Even though apparently the, it doesn't go plus to minus, it goes minus to plus the flow of electrons or something, but that's too much for my head to cope with. I'm not gonna um, tell you any more about that because I don't know. Right. Vehicle supply, demand, okay? The alternator should be able to keep up with it okay if not then perhaps the regulator isn't um, working but one thing I'll tell you about this is very very important is the B plus connector here okay which um, can get corroded not so much on um, stuff unless you have been off-roading a lot you've been underwater that can corrode quite badly yeah and um, what happens, okay, is that the voltage regulator sees something like 11 volts and it wants to put more out, okay? 
it wants to get up to 14.4 volts is what it's, it, it's, it's set at for maximum output for instance and it's trying to do it. It's also the same with the flat battery. This is going to be working flat out. Yeah, it's going to be trying to put current into that. Now if the system is reading low, that wants to put it out. The problem is, okay, is that is if this is corroded, you've got resistance there, it can't read what's in it properly, so it will keep upping the, the voltage output until it burns out. Yeah? And then you have an issue because your own name is Fubard, right? And I've seen this a couple of times already on uh, on cars, yeah? And uh, yeah, basically, you should check B+, always check the connectors for problems, which is positive and negative. Do it on a maintenance schedule as well, especially if you're off-roading, something like that. Yeah, these are very, very susceptible to problems. It will cost you money. You are, I doubt you get a vehicle fire from it, but I have heard recently, and I know you uh, sit like to an Land Rover Discovery in the car park, yeah? Could have been the problem, who knows, yeah? Um, anyway, so, yeah, basically, there you have it in a nutshell, the charging system, okay? Um, electrics is, is very, very, very interesting. Um, you don't need to know too much, and I'm going to have to show you some diagnostics sometime, yeah? Um, on a vehicle. However, I do it. I will do it. And uh, one of the most important things, of course, because this causes people the most problems. They can live without a, a, a light. They can always buy the wire together. But if the vehicle is not charging properly, there is a reason for it. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times, people do not pay attention to their batteries until it's too late, and then they'll struggle for weeks and weeks and weeks. The weather gets cold takes the edge off the battery, the battery will not start the vehicle, or they could have a parasitic drain somewhere, which is taking the voltage down overnight on the, on the vehicle. Classic one on the alternator is um, a diode gone, letting um, voltage drain through to earth. Yeah, so there's a short in, in the alternator and the battery will be drained. Um, the worse it is, the quicker it gets drained. Yeah? Usually it's something like a courtesy light that, that's on in the back, say, for instance, especially the discos, they're classic for that. Um, the, uh, the courtesy light is, is on all the time, it takes the battery out, okay? Alarm systems generally don't because they go into a high hibernation mode, okay, until they're woken up, and they use very little power, yeah? So, anyway, there's some information for you. I hope it's uh, useful for you at some point in your life with your, with your uh, passion. So, anyway, until the next video, see you later. Yeah. <sighs>